Good evening ladies and gentlemen. Before my presentation is started, let me ask you something. What would be the picture coming in your mind if I just say the word an engineer? Uh, would it be a woman like me or somebody wearing a helmet and an overall a male engineer in a dusty environment? Our dream would be to see the day where half of you would be thinking about a woman and half of you would be thinking about a man. I am Pavitra Abhayavardhana. I am a mother. As our chief guest mentioned, this is, the, my, this is my favorite but the most difficult role I have to play. And by profession, I am a senior civil engineer and a water professional. I am a chartered environmental professional who tries to make balance development and environment. I am a master trainer in my organization. I work as a mentor and motivator inside my organization and for the school children. I'm Toastmaster and I'm the Vice President Public Relations in my club. I lead my sites to perfection by balancing the resources and most of the times I'm a team player and I'm a poet. I love to express myself th through my poetry and I'm a researcher. I've researched on water, wastewater and waste management and, and I've won many several national level awards and I am a publisher and this is my passion, I love to write and within a day, within a week, I play multiple roles and I try to play each role to the perfection. Just like me, most women I know can play and do play many roles and they excel in them because genetically they are women, we have been given the possibility to accustom to a new environment and excel in it. But in engineering, still there is a huge, reduc huge gap between males and females. So why and do we have to worry? Why don't we just let men do the stressful, responsible work and we just relax? We can't do it because engineers are responsible for taking more one of the, most of the decisions in crucial to mankind infrastructure, development, environmental preservation, medical breakthroughs. So if half of the population do not have a say in these outcomes, they won't be suitable for everyone. So that's why we insist that more women should be there in engineering and more women should come. Sri Lanka is a winner in e gender equal education, but still you can see that in physical science and engineering technology, the female participation is very low. And we consider the universities, engineering uh, female engineering students are less than a quarter. Why? Why don't girls come to this amazing, fantastic profession? The first one is lack of awareness. They do not know the options. They do not know, do not know the benefits. They think of engineering as civil engineering construction, which is just sitting in a dusty, sunny environment. They do not know the diversity in this fine, uh, fantastic field. And the STEM options, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, these options give so much prospects. When, but the girls and the families, because of the lack of a proper career guidance system in Sri Lanka, they think going to the university is the ultimate goal that will ensure your job. But the arts graduates will have a 32% of employment rate, while the STEM graduates will have 92% of employment. And negative st stereotypes of a female competence is girl can, girls can't do maths, girls can't read maps. And male males are better in spatial skills than us because from the infant age they make blocks while we play with makeup, dolls and those kind of toys. And even when I was selected to faculty of engineering, people said don't go there, it's a male's world, you will be just masculine and you are not masculine enough to go. But I stubbornly went. But that is the idea of the society. And girls see lady doctors, lady teachers, nurses, but they rarely get to see lady engineers in action. So what you can't see, you can't be. And they do some very less schools provide STEM stream in A-levels. So even if a girl wants to go there, she does not have the chance. So how do I inspire women to select, uh, succeed in engineering? Everything would start at home. So I give my girl and boy equal chances, breaking gender barriers at home, 
and I always try to emphasize what engineering is about to the people, the students. I am a mentor and I am successful, very passionate engineer, so I am a role model to many around me. And I, sup I provide support to my colleagues and my juniors and they turn to me when they have a problem. And why do we have to have technology, girls in technology? Our country is facing the worst economic crisis and I think we have to have all the resources to solve this. So women are the largest untapped talent pool, so it's time we get them to action. Women bring diverse ideas which add value to the products. They come with a different skill set, uh, better communication, negotiation, public relations, so that will be amazing for the organizations. And if we teach a woman and keep her at home, all the investment would be lost. So it's time we take action. And better tech jobs will come with job security, better prospects, better trading opportunities. So there, that will ensure living better living standards for women and better living standards for their families. So that will also inspire more younger generations of females to join the tech industry. These women have made the way for us. So ladies to lead the world and lead the country. So I personally think our job is not difficult compared to them because they had to break all the barriers and pave the path. We just have to follow them and go a little further. And my vision. My vision has three segments. Empowering lady engineers, uh, create support inside the family and making the society aware. I encourage lady engineers to constant, continuously learn not only the technical subjects because what, what differentiates leaders and team players is leaders come with a lot of skills. Better communication, crisis management, risk management. So you have to be equipped with those things to succeed as, an, as a leader. And you should be confident. It will be a bit difficult every time you go, go out of the comfort zone but you have to check, take the challenges and you will eventually feel that you are expanding in different directions. So that's the quality we want in a lead. And be yourself. We don't have to man up, be masculine to be a good engineer. When I was coming here today, I was, I, I wanted to wear a red sari with flowers and I just thought, would it be okay if I wear red and flowers to an engineering event? Then I, then I also thought, I'm a woman who loves red. So this is what I'm going to wear. So, and pull each other up. When we go up the ladder, we should remember the hardships females encounter in the engineering fields and we should pull each other up. There's an African idiom saying, if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, you have to go with the crowd. So we are the minority, we should stick together and pull everyone together to higher levels. Make your own stage. We know as adults, nobody is going to create a stage and invite you there. It's our job to go out and create our own stage. As our chief guest mentioned, there are so many crises related to engineering. My dream would be to see the day where a panel of engineers would go there whenever there is a crisis like Yugadanavi, Norichole, Umawaya, Port City. So the girls would go give press conferences, give proposals. So there, there will be a massive impact because we have to make our own stages and we have to go out to the people. We can't say people do not know engineers, people do not know women engineers. It's our duty to go and perform so they get to know who we are and what we do. And then a massive female support network. That is my dream, my vision. So this network will consist of mentors and trainers, senior and junior engineers and undergraduates and aspiring students who are from the school. There, anybody would be able to ask anything and get clarification. If a junior engineer wants to know the best postgraduate degree to suit her career path, she will be able to ask and there will be hundreds of women out there who have gone there before her. If a girl wants to be a mar marine engineer, she would be able to ask, am I able to do that in Sri Lanka? What is the best place for me to go? So there will be people who have walked that path and you are sure to have a answer the, to a question and I have seen that even a kind word, a shoulder to cry on is needed at times. When we are balancing a family, so many crises can come 
and a kind word can do wonders and even retain you in a career when you are going to give up. So I think this kind of network is important and the social media permits, Facebook groups, WhatsApp groups, they are most of these things can be done. And I want to narrow the gap between industry, university and student. That's a huge gap. The industry do not have graduates with skills needed for the industry. The schools do not have send children suited to the industry. So we have to send the industry to the school. I can remember in my school when there were all girls coming and talking to us from lawyers, engineers and doctors. We were A and we could see that um, she became one. So I am sure I can be someone like that too. So we have to go out to the schools and we can bring children to the school, to the industry where they can see what's going on in the world, what's going on in the labor market. And the universities should um, restructure so we are better suited to the economic crisis and the emerging world. I am uh, giving feedback as an industrial collective member to the University of Jap Jaffna Engineering Faculty Curriculum. So it's a very good chance where we can tell them what we expect from the fresh graduates so uh, they are ready to face the challenges in the industry. Financial aid to female students. I believe that none should be, none should have to give their dreams because of a financial constraint. So we can just contribute something very small but it will be a massive impact for a person's life. I think we can also arrange those things in this network. But I think empowering women would not be enough. As a mother, as a wife, I know how important it is for excellent performance that we know our children are safe and our family is happy. I, uh, I know the bliss of a supportive family because my husband um, is with me and whenever there is a crisis and I have to stay an extra hour at work, I just have to tell them, please can you go home early and take care of the kids because I am stuck at work. He will never ask questions, he will just go. But I know of women engineers who will face unpleasantness for several days for staying that extra hour. So those things should be changed by making awareness and making support. The industry should be child friendly. We should be having things like flexible working hours if we can and work from home option for mothers with young kids which can let them not compromise work or family and they should be able, that will give them chances to balance work and life. So I would like to end my presentation by thanking each one of you for inviting me here on this stage today because um, I take it that it as an ocean that you have recognized and honored our presence and our contribution in this, this field. And I would like to end my presentation with a poem. This is my, these are my references. And I would like to end with a, a poem by my favorite poet, Rupi Kaur, what she wrote for the last Wednesday's International Women's Day. So I believe that it summarizes everything I have to say today. It says, I stand on the sacrifices of a million women before me thinking what can I do to make the mountain taller so the women after me can go further. Thank you very much.